What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. This right here, yep, right here is the podcast where we dive into the deepest, darkest, murkiest waters with a plethora of legendary guests. This guy right here, me, is of course your host, your bastard of ceremonies, the numero uno scumbag, Rex Ruger, folks. That's Rex with three, count them three. X's. You might also know me as AKA the King of Sleaze, AKA the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, last but certainly not least, AKA Diamond David Lee Roth Jr. And let me assure my fans out there the DNA testing is almost conclusive. We're almost at the finish line. Spoke to the lawyers today. DNA testing is almost conclusive, right where we want everything, folks, where we will prove once and for all. But we've all known all along that you are looking at the son of glam, the front man for the band. Just smoked a few grams. I got a million fans because I'm your ice cream man. Mr. Wop, Bob, Lou, Bob, Wop, Bam, Bam, Shazam. Hot damn. Feeling good. And of course, everybody in the house looking good. In the wise words of Fernando Lamas, it is better to look good than to feel good. If you're looking at this hair and you're saying, Rex, how do I get a luscious quaff like that? Boom. That's how. Comes in industrial strength and light. And remember to spray responsibly. Coming to you as always from the lush lavender lounge of love and joined as always by my good pal, Keith Hernandez Puppet. Who only speaks when necessary. But tonight, I think he might speak because he's excited about tonight's guest. This is, of course, the No Frills podcast. You don't get frills because I give you thrills. And you're looking at those thrills right here. This face. The face that reeks of glam. I am, of course, the hardest working man in show business, not only bringing you this killer podcast with legendary guests, but also fronting numerous glam and sleaze metal bands all over the place, up and down the eastern seaboard. Oh, here's another reason why I might add this is the No Frills podcast, because I don't know shit about technology. So here you see me as I send my link to my guest. You get a look behind the curtain. You see it all here on Pod Scum. Voice is a little stretched, but a little under the weather. But hey, you can't keep a good front man down. This is the stuff that separates the boys from the legends. And lo and behold, here's our guest. So let's chop it up with him on another episode of Pod Scum and get down to it. This call is now. Hey, Bob. Hey, Trevor Steele. There he is. Look at that. Here we are. Two legends. <laughs> or maybe one legend and one legend in his own mind. But good to see you, buddy. You too, man. How are you doing? Awesome. 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 For my, uh, you know, for the kids out there watching that don't remember the uh, the great era of the 80s and 90s. And I don't want to just, I don't want to timestamp you to just that era, my friend. But of course, you know, well known. The Escape Club couldn't turn on MTV without seeing you guys in that very disturbing video. That's right. We, yeah, I guess we owe a lot to MTV in those <laughs> days, eh? Really, yeah. I, I always see that video catching a lot of flack, though. I mean, did I read correctly? And you, you could probably quantify the statement, you know, being British yourself. But was that really banned on British TV because of the, uh, because of how disturbing it was to see, like, uh, just like limbs dancing around? I don't know if it was banned. I, if I'm really honest with you, I think it was a promo guy's excuse for not getting it on the TV. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> you know, gotcha. I think looking back on it. Yeah, I think so. I think it holds up pretty well, though. Like when you look back on it, like, do you think like, I mean, obviously we've come so far with CGI and all the stuff that you can do in videos. But, you know, when you look back at the time uh, that that video was made, it, it's pretty ahead of its time. Yeah, I mean, we didn't realize at the time, but yeah, all that was done with mirrors, you know, right. way before computers. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. yeah. we we took a risk doing it because we didn't know how it was going to turn out. But yeah, it turned out really well. 
Uh, so catch everybody up to speed on what's going on with you, uh, uh, you know, currently. Any musical endeavors you're doing? Uh, is the Escape Club, uh, you know, up and running and doing stuff? Well, the Escape Club's up and running. We've got, okay, so at the moment I'm living in London. Johnny, the bassist, lives in, in the UK, in London as well. John, the guitarist, lives in Queensland in Australia, which is where I normally am. I'm normally right. in Australia too. Right. And Red's in um, Amsterdam. So, yeah, we're kind of around. But it's, it takes quite a big deal to get us all together, if you know what I mean. Right. So, so me being the singer, I get asked to do the gigs because <laughs> they want to hear my voice, I guess. So, so if I can bring, you know, a couple of the guys along with me, that's fine. Um, but I know I've got a couple of gigs coming up where it's just me, which is kind of, kind of sad. But that's what you got to do these days, you know. Well, you also uh, have done a lot of work, um, uh, you know, behind the scenes, you know, with uh, producing and uh, you had a label for a while yourself. Do you still do you still run a label? No, I don't. Well, I had a label down in Australia. Um, yeah. it did, we did really well. Um, but yeah, it kind of it ran its course. I I, I wouldn't want to do that now. There's <laughs> there's no money in records, man. No, <laughs> no, there's certainly not. <laughs> yeah. What about producing? Do you still do you still produce stuff? And, and, I, and, and do you yeah. like doing that? I do love doing it. Um, it's not as easy to get the gigs these days, obviously, because there's no money left in the business, you know, and I'm letting younger people take over. So what I'm doing yeah. in the music business nowadays, I've got together with a couple of other guys and we're, we're just developing acts, which is what I'm kind of good at. I like finding acts and say, look at them and go, yeah, you guys, if you did this and did this, we can make it a bit better and just help them polish themselves up, you know. So that's what I'm involved in at the moment. So when you're out there looking for these, you know, at, you know, as you say, you know, discovering new bands and new talent, is it, uh, uh, you know, like, do you ever give these young bands any direction? Because the business has changed so much. And what direction do you tell a young musician and or band to go uh, these days? Because obviously, as you mentioned, you know, record labels, you know, the big record contract, all that stuff that we remember from back in the days doesn't even really seem to exist anymore. No, it doesn't. I think if you're talking musical direction, um, which I'm guessing you are, yeah. I think a lot of the time with young bands, and I was the same, you, you don't actually have a direction. You write one song here, one song there, yeah. another song over there, and you just want to sound like your heroes. And I think that's one of the first things I say is like, you, you know, the first thing I listen for is songs. If you can write a song, you're halfway there. You know, it's yeah. really important. So yeah. I often say, look, once you know what sort of songs you want to write, just stick to whatever you do, whatever you love, stick to it. Don't don't be yeah. swayed. That's the, that's the hard thing. And I wish I'd been told that all those years ago, you know. I really yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> you learn, you learn. I know, I know. Um, so, I mean, but, it, you know, uh, going forward, though, I, well, I, you know, I just spoke about the changes in the business, though. I mean, you know, obviously digitalized music, um, you know, not seeing as much of a uh, of I, I mean, bands are still putting out the physical product. But obviously, a lot of people are bypassing the physical product because they've got everything at their fingertips now on their phones. Um, you know, there's not a lot we can do about it, but go with the flow because it's not going to go, uh, you know, obviously technology is not going to go backwards on us. But do you like where we are or or or? Or was the old formula better? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Do I like I it? Know, no, not really. Of course I don't. I, and yeah. I think if you speak to anyone of my age from the music business, hey, look, I mean, like my my income stream has gone down by about 80% yeah. since Spotify came on. Do I like it? Not really, because I don't think it's being used as well as it could. And yeah. the last people in the chain to get any money are the writers or the musicians. I mean, you know that. Sure. Um, sure. So uh, it's great that anyone can put their music out, and I love that. And I and I love that you can bypass the gatekeepers. Um, also, unfortunately, there's the A and R process doesn't exist quite as much. So right. there's a, there's a lot of crap out there as well. You have sure. to fish around. Um, but for for young artists these days, you can't make money out of it. Not really. Not unless you you're Ed Sheeran or you know. Or, somebody like that who just sells absolutely shit piles right. yeah then, then you get some but if you look back in the day if he'd have been around when i was he'd have been selling 10 20 million albums or whatever right. he'd be really well off you know right um and i you know i bet he's not complaining now but um I, I don't have any advice to anyone at the moment i think we're still we're still in a strange position with it all i don't think we've i don't think the dust has settled and i don't think we'll know for another good few years if 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 artists and bands will survive this i just don't know because right. already i've got loads of friends who are songwriters who've just given up now 
you know, professional songwriters, there's no there's no point anymore. You're not going to earn any money. It's and the ones who are, yeah, and the ones who are still in the game, I, I'm hearing tales of them. If if a you know if a management company approaches them and says, look, we've got this singer, we'd love you to write songs, they're asking for some of the merch money now. You know? Wow, that's what I it's mean, come to. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's what it's come to, and that's just wrong. I mean, I yeah. I couldn't do that. I would not feel right asking for that. You know, no, but, no. Yeah. Now you mentioned earlier about bands, or or you know, back in the day, you wanted to write songs and sound like your heroes. Uh, for you, early on, who was that? Um, David Bowie and David Byrne, <laughs> my favorite. Really, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we ever sounded like him, but they were my heroes anyway. You know. And was music always going to be the direction you were going to go in uh, uh, in life? I mean, and how early on did you know? I I found out late, really, compared to the rest of my buddies. Yeah. Um, I I was kind of you know like troubled teenager like we all were you know sure. um, and i've always been a writer i've always written i've always been quite good at the written word yeah and it was only through strange circumstances got me into hanging out with musicians and i thought hmm, you know what i might want to try this and it yeah. wasn't until i was just leaving high school that i actually picked a guitar up and started so i started late and you taught yourself to play uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of taught myself. Read the guy who plays drums with us now. He taught me the, my first chords and everything. <laughs> He's a better guitarist than me still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, you know, so obviously, uh, you know, I, I think it's it's safe to say for people that are more, you know, casual music fans that everybody would probably know and recognize the Wild Wild West song. That's right. Yeah. You know, that song, you know, and I'm sure as as, as the artist, uh, you know, you're going to say, of course, that that song, you know, treated you really, really well. But, the, you know, deep down inside, did you ever feel like you were getting pigeonholed as the Wild Wild West band? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, sometimes I, I you know, I, I imagine sometimes that that can be tough, though, like when you're associated with just one really big song sometimes and people don't delve into your catalog and you become known by a song, though. Does that get frustrating as an artist? Yeah, it kind of does. And the weird thing for us is that it was a huge song. It was a number one. It was Grammy huge. nominated, all those things. Yeah. But you know what? We had four top 20 hits or was it sure. three top 20? You know, and, and most bands have had, you know, if you've had that many top 20 hits, but not a number one, everyone remembers you for all your tracks, you know? Right. Right, but for right. us, no one remembers any of the other songs, you know, <laughs> apart from the fans. Fans of the band, obviously. Um, it kind of gets to you sometimes. I think for me, sometimes I've got friends. If I meet someone in, in Australia where I, I live most of the time, yeah. um, they say, oh, we heard your song today. And you go, <laughs> yeah, you know, I've got more than one. <laughs> you know, it's, it's better than not knowing any, right? I know. You start to feel like, hey, I did write some other ones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, back in the day, I mean, you couldn't turn MTV on back in the days and not see that video, though. I mean, MTV had it very heavily in its rotation, um, you, you know, and obviously MTV, you know, back in that generation really helped propel a lot of bands. And I guess video that that forum still does exist. But now it seems like bands make videos and they just stick them right up on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. And 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 yeah, and it's. It's kind of interesting. We thank you, MCV, from our point of view. I mean, yeah, we wouldn't yeah. have got anywhere like we did with it without MCV. Yeah, and now it's YouTube and 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 Instagram or whatever, whatever, wherever it's TikTok, obviously, especially. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I guess artists could be more inventive now. I think the budgets aren't there, you know, because yeah. I was I was looking after a band um, quite recently, and they had big budget, you know, but trying to get a decent budget for the videos was pretty tough you know we yeah. we ended up getting more views on their homemade videos than we did on the music videos you know it's quite interesting well, that is a very peculiar video though because you know i knew i was going to be talking to you so i went back and watched it again though man and it, it, it is weird seeing just arms and legs but you know banging on tambourines and dancing provocatively though it really was an an off the wall concept but it really really worked i mean you got this art you got this hand that's running its way up up your leg when playing a tambourine and yeah. it was i mean it was really it was really outside of the box though but i mean i i yeah i guess you know and i see people down in the comment section in youtube and and you know 
it, it seems like it's a polarizing video. You know what I mean? Because I think some <laughs> people think like this is a little weird. You know what I mean? But like, why did you decide to go that way? Uh, you know, like, was it a censorship thing? Like, rather than just having scantily clad that, you know, a full scantily clad woman in the video, you know, dancing and banging the tambourines or, you know, I mean, was it intentional to go that route? I, I'm pleased we didn't in retrospect you know and i think yeah. a lot of bands did in those days no it's the video directors showed us these pictures of fairground mirrors that he'd been he'd been working with yeah and he just talked us into it we we're like yeah man this would be really good if, if yeah. it works so it's a big risk so we just went for it and and i didn't really see the effect until post-production you know right i mean i was right. standing there with but we had ballet dancers doing the poses because obviously yeah. it's very hard to keep those poses for a long time. Oh yeah. So I was just looking down at these guys and like hanging there with their with their arms and legs out there, and I didn't really know what was going on until we saw it. But you do make a good point, though, because it probably would have been if it would have just been like another '80s video with scantily clad women in it. Yeah. It would have made it much more forgettable. Yeah, absolutely, and 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 old looking at least. I hope the Wild Wild West video still stands up, you know? <laughs> it does. It does. It, does. it definitely holds up. Yeah, it definitely yeah. holds up. Um, so now that you're, um, um, you know, I just had a birthday this past uh, Sunday, just turned 50 years old. Um, so, you know, I, I I, I'm one of those throwback kind of people who kind of went, well, you know, went to digital music kind of kicking and screaming. I still like a physical product. I'm still from an era where you open stuff up and you look at a gatefold and you look at album art. Um, uh, um, you know, do you miss that kind of stuff? I still do it. I only listen to vinyl. Really. You do? Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, so you're yeah, a I, I kind of figured you probably would be. Yeah. Yeah. Just because, you know, I've spent years in the studio. I've produced loads of artists and, and one of the most disheartening things is you you're sitting in this expensive studio listening through these big speakers to something you've spent weeks and weeks making and you look to each other and go you know this is the last time it's going to sound like this right next someone's going to be listening is, right yeah, someone's going to listen to this through a cell phone yeah <laughs> exactly that's the next time anyone's going to hear it and it's yeah. like it kind of is a bit demoralizing really you know and i do i mean i sound like an old git saying this but i think the quality of music's really gone down because Agreed. of green yeah, you know, yeah, because I would agree with that. the labels don't want to spend the money. Um, people make a decent sounding record in their bedroom now, and that's fine. But it, it's sad that you can't get those really lush productions that we used to get. You know, yeah, it is. It, it is. Uh, so, so, um, you know, we talked about you know you being obviously a performer, but also producing. Do you like one more than the other? I mean, obviously, you you, you know you start out as a performer, um, you know, but you know as you've gotten older in the business, do you like being back, you know, kind of behind the controls as opposed to hitting the stage, or or do you do you still do you still really have a passion for for getting out there and playing live? It's funny. I think it's gone through time. Um, if you'd have asked me that 10 years ago, I'd without doubt said, yeah, I, I love producing more. Yeah. Yeah. Now I much prefer performing. You <laughs> really do. Do. Yeah. 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 I, I know really deep down that's what I'm, that's what I do. And, I, and when I'm up there doing it, when we're with the band up there doing it, I feel, I feel good. Of course yeah. you do. You've got all these people look, come to see you. Of yeah. Course you feel good, right? It's yeah, great. Yeah. It's yeah. 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 I mean, um, and, and so now, uh, you know, um, when you do get older and you go out and perform, obviously, you know, you're not 25, you're not hitting the road for weeks and months at a time, you know, how, how, how do you plan out your itinerary now? Obviously you mentioned that the guys are, 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 are scattered about in different parts of the world or whatever, but do you kind of just like do like handfuls of select dates? Do you kind of just do like the isolated dates and then come home? We kind of do, if I'm really honest and I should be really, we do what we get given. So so yeah. the last big tour we did was three it's pre-pandemic so it's probably four years ago now was the lost 80s tour um, and that was pretty brutal for old fellas like us you know yeah. and all the guys on the stage you know all of us who are doing it because you're, you're playing one city one night one another city the next night you've got a day off then you fly it's like it's like the old days and you know yeah. you're flying around doing it i think the secret is you just make sure you're fit which i am you know make sure i'm fit all the way through it um, don't eat too many pies, you know, yeah. just get up there and, yeah, and do pies. your thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> just do your thing. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm curious to, I'm curious to ask though. Um, uh, well, you know, 
I'm trying to think of like, you know, exactly like, you know, uh, how I want to word this, but, um, you know, when you look back, uh, at, at, at performing and, 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 you know, you know, being a big part of that, uh, 80 scene, you know, what would you say the biggest shift or the biggest, ch- obviously there's been a lot of changes, uh, you, you, you know, but just from a performer standpoint though, like what's the difference though, like nowadays when you get up on a stage and perform as opposed to back in the eighties, was it easier just having more people at a record label taking care of things? Cause I'm just hearing so many horror stories when I get musical artists on here that, you know, it's feast or famine. They got to, they feel pressured to sell merchandise at the shows. You, I, you know what I mean? And I, as you mentioned at the top of the interview, you know, a lot of your, your, your you know, your revenue is cut back. Yeah, you know, how do we see our way through this? Do you have an opinion on that? Like how does the music business, you know, fix itself? Um, I'm not sure it will. Um, I think for young band, I wouldn't want to be in a band starting up now. I've got to be honest. Yeah. Um, they have to, and it's the buzz around the industry. It's gigs and merch, gigs and merch. You know. Right. I, I walked in. I got this band down in Australia. I've got them really doing well. They were, you know, they were filling out thousand seat venues before we had a record deal. They were all over the internet. So obviously, all the labels come and start sniffing round. Right. Um, and I had, you know, Sony and Warners and Universal all knocking my door down trying to sign them. And every single one of those labels were going, yeah, yeah, we want to do your deal, but we want a bit of the gigs and merch. It's like the greedy fuckers now yeah. want right. the only place there's any money for the poor bands now. They want a cut of that as well. Um, I didn't let them have it because luckily we were in a powerful, powerful position. Um, and we knew we could put a record out by and by that by ourselves. Right. Um, but, but I've seen recently. I, I heard from another friend who manages a band. I won't mention their name, but they're just giving so much to the labels. They get nothing back from it. So, what's the future? I I I don't know. I think people will always do it because people love playing music. Right. Um, and it'll always be there. Um, is there some way out there to harness like what they're doing with the digitalized music and somehow get, you know, get more revenue to the artist? Because, you know, it sounds like it's something ridiculous, like per the amount of streams, per the, per the amount of money that you actually see from these streams, it, it has to be an astronomical amount of streams. And then you still see very little though. So like, I, you know, I don't know like how the record company gets a hold of it and says, you know, geez, here's how we're going to manage it. It seems like it just kind of, just kind of ballooned and just kind of got out of their hands so quickly. Well, it has, and it's and it's an interesting one because, as you know, like all the labels have, you know, they've all sort of con- congealed into like three major labels, and that's yeah. a lot now. Um, they all, and it's not really widely broadcast. They've all got shares in Spotify, so right. they they're doing all very well. Thank you very sure. much. You know, they they're not suffering, not like the artists are. <clears throat> and I know that there's word we've all been complaining. Taylor Swift. Bless her, she's been really good. She's been knocking the door down. Yeah. Um, and I think people are beginning to listen. And I'm hoping the industry will change. And I, I get all the music, you know, sort of industry stuff coming right. through. And I can sense a change coming. Um, I don't know how long it will take and I don't know how good it will be. But I think they're beginning to realise that that people aren't aspiring to be rock and roll stars. Right. That's for sure as much as they used to. I mean, no one signs bands anymore. It's always right. solo artists, if you think about it. You know, all the stars now, they're all, there's very few bands that are doing really well. So, and I, thought, I think that's pretty pretty sad, you know? Is it, is it, like you mentioned Taylor Swift, is it kind of imperative that some of these more established artists who are kind of, you know, at the top of the proverbial food chain, you know, that they kind of speak out and maybe they rectify some change? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and, and t- Taylor's been brilliant at it. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and I so think pretty that's much is going to come down to more established artists coming out and saying, "Hey, this whole rock and roll thing is going to die if we don't start getting these kids some money." You know, and Absolutely. get them kickstarted and motivated to want to do this. Absolutely. And hey, you look. I think another thing that we're missing, and we had a lot of it in the seventies and the eighties, is a, is a movement. I mean, I came out of the our band came out of the new romantic movement and all that. You remember that? Oh, we yeah. came out of the dregs sure. of that. There was punk and there was all that stuff. There isn't really anything apart from obviously hip hop has been massive and yeah. rap, but there's been nothing really coming out of the rock and roll stable for a long time. Not not really, not a, a movement right. that we used to have. You know, like a fashion led. 
I mean, I could be wrong. I might be missing something. But no, I no, don't no, no, no. I, I like what you're saying because I've gone online and I've looked for bands that, that you know, that are, that, that, you know, I'll try to put in an artist and then I'll see if there are any current similar bands kind of flying the flag of what these bands that I used to love, you, you know, they, that that used to get me excited back in the day. You know, there weren't bands that that, that could really you know, rock, but then still get you onto a dance floor. You guys are one of those bands, but you, yeah. you know, like, uh, you know, like an in excess, a very interesting band, you know, a band that could, a band that could get up on stage and, and rock very hard, but then still get the girls out onto the dance floor. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you don't see anybody really coming up with too many interesting sounds right now. Music sounds very, very cookie cutter. Like you said, you've either got to be a rapper or you've got to be a, a, a rock and roller. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. And in the rock and roll side of things, Where's the protest songs? Where, right. is all, where is all that stuff? You know, yeah. there's plenty of it coming out of the rap, uh, but there's no, there's no one protesting. And damn, there's a damn lot to protest about, right? Yeah, so. you think so? <laughs> a little irreverence, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, where it's, is it? A long way. Yeah. Now, do you think that the, uh, uh, you know, obviously, you know, I would imagine you would have an opinion on this having had a label yourself, but would you advise like a new artist right now to probably almost be better off doing the, uh, doing the, uh, going the do it yourself route? I would to a certain extent, um, but I think always try and get someone on board who can help you to develop yourself because I think artists left to themselves very rarely have the, the oversight to make it as good as it could be. Yeah. Um, and that's usually what a record label used to do. Um, so, yeah, go and do it yourself, but don't be shy about hooking up with some people who can help you. I just think the old model was probably, I think it, we're in a, a moment of change i think it'll all change but yeah. right now you wouldn't rely on a big label if you sign to universal i know for a fact you, they'll put a couple of singles out and drop you and they're not going yeah. to do anything right you know so you're better you are better off doing it yourself but what they will do is get you on tv yeah and, yeah. and of course it doesn't matter quite as much as it used to if you can get enough hits on youtube and you know and, and um tiktok you you probably don't need it as much well, one thing I have an opinion on, and, 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 you know, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, we can't really go backwards with technology, but having the advent of the internet, I almost feel like sometimes that, it, you know, and, and, you know, as you mentioned, you know, earlier, um, you know, kind of taking the romanticism out of the music business because there isn't that air of mystery behind our rock stars anymore. We can find out every goddamn thing we want by looking on the Internet, who they're married to, who, well, you know, if they just signed their divorce, you know, what I mean, you know what they're doing, what they're driving, what they ate for dinner last night. You know, what I mean, I almost think that it's kind of ruined it a little bit. You know, by being able to find out as much as we can, you know, because we used to just be limited to, you know, who they thanked and like what we could read inside of those gatefolds, you know? Uh, yeah, I totally agree. The mystery just has gone completely. Yeah. And, and I know any artist that I'm looking after these days, I, I just say to them, you're going to have to get online because if you don't, you're just going to disappear. You have to do all that. They they need to know what kind of underwear you wear and all that stuff. It's, yeah, yeah. it's sad. I hate that. Yeah. It's, but that's the that's the fact. That's what it is. Um, and and now you mentioned earlier, you know, you first really fell in love with the writing aspect of music. So are you somebody that uh, you, you know uh, still sits down and does a lot of writing? I do a lot of writing. I don't necessarily write music all the time, but I write every day. Oh, yeah. Okay. And yeah. and when we were going through this whole lockdown, quarantine, COVID uh, bullshit that we were going through, did you find that to be, you know, when everything was kind of shut down, uh, did you find that period of time uh, ab abundantly fruitful for you as far as writing or like what kind of like a mindset were you in when we were going through all that? No, I didn't actually. And it's interesting. I've spoken to a lot of fellow writers and we all felt the same. Um, because I was living in in London at the time, I was living right in the middle of the zombie apocalypse. You know, yeah. I mean? and I was yeah. and I was in me and my wife were in our flat, which is a lovely flat. But it, after a while, it kind of gets a bit old. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and no, the inspiration wasn't really there. It was I wrote a couple of things, but I didn't. It was I had to force myself because yeah. I think everyone went through this trauma, and it's hard to write out when you're in the middle of a trauma. You know, yeah, right, yeah. right. Yeah. And, and did you think that, uh, you know, uh, were you at any time, uh, you know, uh, extremely concerned about like, you know, like how long like this thing would drag out and like, you know, how much of a damper it could potentially put on your career? Because obviously, you know, it put a damper on a lot of actually getting out and playing and doing live gigs and everything, everything, you know, the, everything had the kibosh kind of put on it. Yeah, I, I think I watched it 
wither on the vine from from the day it started i was working with a young band and a, and a bunch of um, digital marketing guys mm -hmm. and within a couple of months i could tell that the guys the young guys were completely traumatized yeah and, and they 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 were young they wanted to you know the time passed for me a lot quicker than it did for them because they're younger right right um, and, and they just couldn't handle it couldn't deal with it as as well as you know well you know it, it was a ridiculous situation and that just kind of collapsed the whole thing collapsed yeah um and coming out of the pandemic i've noticed that in my sphere there's not as much and there's not as much going on i think people are just trying to pick up the pieces yeah um, and from the escape club point of view we had gigs booked and everything um they obviously got cancelled um but then now we've come out the other side of it all the people who've been booked for that time now they're doing makeup gigs so the next gigs are like years away because everyone's like trying to fill up the venues right. that have been cancelled in the first place and right and people you know because there's big recessions going on now people don't have the money that they did you know a few years ago so it's affecting us all yeah well that's a big problem for me because i um you know a lot of these concerts and 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 uh, i don't want to get on a soapbox about this i have brought it up on past episodes but it kind of you know i do kind of see what some of the bands and i don't think pearl jam had a lot of help back in the 90s but when they rallied against the ticket master thing and the price gouging I kind of didn't understand it then, but I kind of get it now, like when they're slapping these big charges on, because I'm wondering what the handling fee is when you're printing your own tickets now, or you're letting them scan your phone, like what exactly they're handling to the tune of $25 on an extra, extra on a ticket. Yeah. Oh, I, I'm sure loads of it's going off on, on the tech and on the collection agencies and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, now you mentioned Bowie earlier, you, you know, who I absolutely love, uh, you know, uh, several years back we lost Prince, you know, I mean, we can't even go into the iconic, you know, uh, musicians that we've lost, but you know, in today's music business, are we going to see iconic people like that emerge again? Or have we seen like the death of people becoming iconic in the music industry? Like, will we see Michael Jackson's again? Will we see Prince's? Will we see Madonna's again? Or, 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 or can a superstar like that just not emerge from this music scene anymore? Well, I was told by a very wise record company executive a few years ago now, and I think he has a point. He said, you've got to look at the music industry like the Hollywood film industry, right? So back in the day, when there were things like proper blockbusters, people used to go out to see movies. They were right. big movie stars, right? We still have movie stars, but not like the right. big movie stars right. i think we went through a period and we're lucky to have been through it we went through a period of the big music stars sure i think we'll still have stars but i don't think we'll have the icons well, as much yeah. is my is my thought on it you know could be wrong but that's what yeah. i think yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. It, it, and it's sad because you know when we lose them you start to think who's gonna emerge who's gonna be the next king of pop who's gonna be the next prince who's gonna be the next you know global phenomenon like a madonna that's gonna be that you know that, that you know that uh that role model you know what i mean that every girl wanted to be her back in the day you know what i mean we just don't seem to have those music stars anymore that just kind of you know just you know are just like up you know up here just transcending the actual business you know i mean you know you obviously were in a time where a lot of those people that i just mentioned were really thriving too you know yeah, they, they were yeah they were huge you know it's probably going to be a an ai it's going to be some yeah, <laughs> some right. artist, you know? yeah. i don't know yeah now back in that you know obviously i just mentioned a lot of people that you you, you know that are always going to be remembered in the music business when you guys were really at the height of your career and things were really thriving like back in the 80s and 90s in your travels were you ever starstruck did you ever bump into anybody that really blew your mind as a fan as a fan well not then no, i met i met mccartney um a, a few years ago and i was yeah. starstruck by that i mean yeah it's, Paul yeah. Come yeah, it's on, a beetle know. yeah for god's yeah. sake um, geez yeah I, um so have i was i starstruck not particularly i mean it kind of it just when you're traveling around doing it you know we went to a lot of parties we went to the famous queen party in london where everyone was there you know right. freddie you know 
but I wasn't starstruck. I would have been if I'd have met Bowie. I never met Bowie. I would love to have done. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. Um, Rest in so, peace, great David yeah. Bowie. Yeah. Yeah. So really, in answer to your question, no, because they're all just a bunch of musicians, you know. Right, right. right. That's, probably, <laughs> that's probably a healthy way to look at it, you know what I mean? Because, you know, that idol worship can get a little crazy sometimes, you know? I mean, yeah. uh, how about the best piece of advice that you've ever been given or that has ever really stuck with you, whether it's about the music business or not? Best bit of advice is music business advice. A friend of mine was in a, a successful band, semi-successful band um, in New York, about five to six years before us. Okay. And I was I was with him one day um, when I was I was in New York and we'd just done a gig. And he said to me, I'll give you some advice. And I said, what is it? And he said, this doesn't last. I mean, hey, that's that's yeah. And I, I went, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I realized too late he was right. You know, yeah. yeah. Be, be prepared. It yeah. doesn't go on forever. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so, what's on the horizon, other than the Escape Club? Uh, anything else that you've got to promote? Any other projects going on? Anything else in the works? I have got stuff in the works, but I can't really promote it yet because it's okay. not not there. And um, we've enough. got some Escape Club stuff coming up. I've got. I'm. I've got. I've just been offered. I'm. I'm looking forward to this. I've been offered. There's a. There's a band called the Reflex, and they're. They're like an '80s covers band, right? Yeah. And they played down in Huntington Beach, and they've asked. They're asking a whole bunch of us. They. They contacted me and said, "Would you come and do a few songs?" It's like shit. Yeah. If you. Yeah. Can get me out there. I'm there. So I yeah. know I'm doing that. That this year. I've got a couple of other things in in the fire looks like we've got a couple of things coming up so yeah you know i don't know well I, I think we'll be out there again good 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 well it's been a real pleasure talking to you and hopefully we can stay in touch and when uh these things really get cooking uh well pl please come back on and we'll uh, chop it up and talk about them love to yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah it's really been a pleasure talking to you trevor and i i really appreciate you i really appreciate you spending some time with us thank you so much it's really been a pleasure thank you, thank you. all right best all right. wishes to you my friend thank you Thanks, mate. All right. Bye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Red button. Right? Oh, good? The, yeah, yeah, yeah. The red button down there to hang up. Okay, mate. I'll yeah, see you yeah. soon. Bye. Yeah. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. There you have it, folks. That was trevor Steele, you might remember him from the escape club and if you were around in the 80s and the 90s you definitely remember him because you couldn't turn on mtv little hint to the kids out there watching mtv did used to play music videos go do your homework and check out the escape club's video wild wild west way ahead of its time but that's a guy that's seen it all done it all in the music business uh trevor Steele, go back and check out all the great music that the escape club did and uh, go out and support everything that that guy does because he's a hell of a good guy. And uh, you heard he's got some stuff cooking and in the work. So uh, we will definitely hook up with Trevor again and find out when he's got things that he can announce and talk about and promote. You know, we'll certainly provide him a forum. Uh, didn't go real long on that one because my own pipes are a little uh, scratchy, as you can hear, getting over a little illness. But I uh, want to thank Trevor Steele from the Escape Club for coming on. Enjoyed chopping it up with him. And I hope you guys also enjoyed that. And I want to remind you guys, until the next episode of Pod Scum, to take it easy. Keith, did you like that? Let me ask you first. Trevor Steele from the Escape Club. You were around in the 80s. Come on. Well, anyways, Keith didn't chime in anything on that one either. Let me down once again. All he's really good at these days is guarding the door and being the uh, 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 consigliere in the uh, in the doorman and the head of security. You know, Keith, offering up a little something to being a co-host wouldn't hurt. Anyways, folks, remember, take it easy and keep it sleazy.